Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're going to take a look at uh, using CSS classes to style links and create CSS rollovers on text-based links, which is otherwise impossible. So how do we do it? Well, let's first uh, create a link. Let's type the word home, and I'm going to highlight the word home, and down in the properties panel, in the link section, I'm just going to put the pound symbol. Let's shift three, the pound symbol. You can see that it is now a link. It's just a dummy link, a link to nothing. I'm going to select that text. And I'm going to go to split view so I can see my code view. And I have the remainder of an old class in there, which I really want to get out of there. There we go. That's gone. OK. Now what we want to do is come over here into the starting paragraph tag, this P tag right here. You can see that it's a paragraph tag for the home text. We want to go into that and hit space, class, space equals. And here we can just say link underscore CLS for class, closing parent or closing quotes, excuse me. So we have paragraph class equals the class name, which is going to be link CLS. We have not created that link yet, but let's go back to the design view. And this is now looking for that class. So let's create the class. Create a new CSS rule, a class, and just type dot link underscore. CLS, and we're going to define it in this document. So hit OK, and let's just make a couple quick changes. Maybe make it bold, make the color, I don't know, red, and set the decoration to none. Hit OK. And we can see that it's gotten bold, but it doesn't really look right. Let's just save this document and take it out on the web and see what it looks like. You can see that it's been visited. So what we really need to do is specify that we want this whether it be a link or a visited link, we want it to still affect it with this style. So I'm going to right click on this and hit edit selector, editing the name. I'm going to say space colon or space a colon l i n k for link. Then I'm going to type a comma and write dot link underscore cls space a colon visited. And I'm going to click away, and we can see that instantaneously it fixes it. Basically, what we did was we just said any anchors that are links, we want you to apply this link CLS to. And any of those visited anchors, we want that link CLS still to be applied to it. We don't want that, you know, terrible purple with the underline to be applied just because the image or the link has been visited. Let's save it, take it out on the web, see what it looks like. Now it is, in fact, the correct class. Now you can apply these classes. Let's just uh, rename this, whoops, name it link CLS, like we had it before. And uh, select this home, the word home, and we're going to get rid of this class name here. And now it's going to go back to looking just like regular link text. So I'm going to select that, and we're going to go to style and choose link CLS from the properties panel. Let's see what that does for us. There we go, it looks pretty good. Let's save it, take it out on the web. And again, that still looks pretty good. So that works as well. All right, we are going to now play. Well, we're going to go back and uh, we're going to get rid of this style this way. And we're going to select this text, actually, just before the text. And hit Commander Control T twice. Whoops. Looking to wrap the tag. Let me select home and uh, hit code. Seems to be easier to do it this way. Select inside of that parenthesis tag and type class, space equals, open and close quotes, and link underscore CLS. Back to design. And uh, it, you know, it's back to what it was. We need to come up here, a colon link, comma, dot link underscore CLS, a colon visited. Hit enter, and we are good. Here we are. We are where we want to be with that. Now, let's just, well, actually, let me just come into here, edit this selector, and let's take out this link visited stuff. And we're going to save this and preview it in the browser. And you can see that it looks like a normal default visited link. That's just because I've already visited this pound link, you know, half a dozen times. Matter of fact, if I come in here and change this, do something like www.tutbid.com, I know that's not the proper way to write the URL, but we're just doing it as a quick example. You can see that it looks good until I click it. And then it says there's a problem loading it. So let's put that back to uh, pound. 
and up here we are going to edit the selector again and just comma and we're going to add the dot link underscore cls a colon visited at the end of that and let me just double check to make sure it works it works fine and well good so there we go we have just targeted both the regular link and the visited links with that dot link cls class and that little bit of code we put in the paragraph uh, right here class equals link CLS right there within the paragraph tag, the P tag. That is, you know, targeting this entire area right here. So let's go back to design. And uh, we want to add a hover state. So we're going to do something or, uh, or make uh, another class that specifies the hover over a link within this link CLS. So let's create a new CSS rule. And at this point, you can just choose class or you can choose advanced. It really doesn't matter. But class, we'll just give it a class name dot link underscore CLS and then space a colon hover. You can also specify a selector like that up here. You can just do comma and then just add dot link underscore CLS a, you know, whatever you want it to be. It can be that. It could be active. Matter of fact, we're going to do that. We're going to make active and hover both the same thing. Active is the the like split second you click down, or if you click and hold on a text link. Uh, I believe the default is like red, so that's what that is. And uh, that's how you do that. Hit OK. And uh, class names must start with alphabetical character. That's because I started with the period. I'm just going to hit advanced ID because then I can put the period there. Hit OK. And uh, what do I need to do? I'm going to increase the size, number one. I'm going to make it bolder. I am going to make it a bright green color. And I'm going to put a line through it. That is on rollover. So let's save it and let's check to see if it works. Roll over the link and sure enough, well, it turns bright green, so bright green I can't even read it. But you can see that it gets bigger, it turns bright green, and there's definitely a line going through it. So there we go. We have just used a class to both style a link and a rollover for that text-based link. Let's take a look at another way of doing this. Um, let's, uh, well, let's select this text and go back to code view and just get rid of this class here. Bam, just like that. Now it is back to normal text. These classes are sitting in the CSS portion of our page, but they're not affecting anything because there's nothing for them to select. So they're sitting there, they're inert. But we can come and use them anytime we want. So what we can do now is try using a different method to uh, do this. Let's use an advanced selector um, instead of a class just for a second. Let's go uh, new CSS rule and here's a new CSS rule dialog box. Okay, in here, delete all that stuff. Now we're just going to target the A tag. Every link in this page is going to be affected by this style. It's going to be this document only. We're going to define this in. So we're going to hit OK. And uh, here, we're going to say decoration none, color, eh, whatever, dark blue is fine, size can be 12, and uh, that looks good. So hit OK. And you can see that we have, in fact, changed the way that link looks. Problem is, if I were to come down here, and let's say we had a copyright link as well, and uh, let's just put a link there, you can see that, that automatically uh, gets harnessed with that uh, by that selector, just because this is has now is being wrapped by those anchor tags, which that CSS is targeting, is selecting. So now there is an advantage to that because I mean, hey, if you want every bit of text link in your site to you know be dark blue like this, that's great. You can be you can stay very conformed to you know whatever the style of your site is. Say everything's going to look the same, nothing's going to look out of place or kind of weird. And you know it's all done automatically, so you don't have to worry about going through and you know creating hundreds of links all styled the same way over and over and over and over and over again. So that can be really great. As a matter of fact, we can even uh, create a, a selector, so say a hover for the entire document. Hit OK, and on hover, maybe we want these guys to get bolder and uh, maybe a lighter blue, maybe also a bit bigger. So hit OK, and let's just save this, take it out of the web and test it, and see if it works. And in fact, it gets much bigger. And every link will be affected. So there are its advantages, but let's say we don't want to do that. Let's say we, uh, we want the majority of the links uh, to be something else. So we could do a couple things. We could create a new class and you know target every bit of text that is not a link inside of this div uh, with that. Or we could use the advanced selectors and you know select into this div. So how do we do that? Well, quite simple. 
Let's first do double click on this and set a different style for this text. Hit OK. So that, that the links outside of this text box are going to be large and kind of bluish purplish. And uh, we want the links within this to be something completely different. So hit new CSS rule, advanced IDs and pseudo class selectors, and we're going to say pound content underscore right underscore holder. Now that is the div ID of this div. If I select that div down here in the ID section, when that would pop up, it's going to say content right holder. And you just, you know, prefix it with the pound. And we're going to say A, just like that. And now every anchor tag inside of the content right holder is going to be affected by this style. Let's make it radically different. Maybe a uh, red, and of course no decoration. So hit OK. And we can see that our link out here stays fine. Our link in here is affected. Let's save it and take it on the web and check a couple things out. When we roll over this link, we get our nice little rollover. And when we roll over this link, we get, you know, it does the size change, but not the color change. So that's okay, but we want our different uh, a hover for in there. So what we're going to do is create a new CSS rule. And again, well, real quick, before I do that, let me just show you this div here. If I select it. The ID is content right holder. And that is what I'm punching in there as my selector. I'm going to say pound content underscore right underscore holder. A hover. A semicolon hover, that is. Hit OK. And uh, for this, we want the weight to get lighter. And we want it to get huge. And maybe, I don't know, turn readable green and blink. Hit OK. Let's save it and take it out on the web. Again, this link stays fine. This link is quite different, <laughs> as you can see. So there we go. We have just styled links in a couple different ways using CSS, both by simply creating a class style and by uh, you know using our advanced selectors to select within a div and grab anchor tags within that div, or just grab the anchor tags within the whole site. Let's try something else though. Um, again, I'm just going to leave all these styles we've created, and I am going to. Well, I'm going to create another link in here. So I'm just going to hit enter, and I'm going to say products. And we're going to link this up just to an invisible dummy link again, pound. And as soon as we do that, it is automatically detected by the CSS, and CSS does something to it. The next one will be security and I'm going to select that dummy link again okay what I'm going to do now is select these three items and uh, create an unordered list out of them okay unordered list when you select text it's that bulleted list icon thing down in the properties panel and it is an unordered list and what we've just done is surrounded all these links with a UL tag if we go to code we can see that we have UL and the closing UL tag now, using CSS, we can really use this to our advantage. Matter of fact, not only do we have these UL tags, but within the unordered list, UL, we have LI tags surrounding each list item, list item, LI. So we can use all of this to our advantage when we're using CSS. Let's take a look at what we can do with this. Let's go back to design, and uh, we are going to target the unordered list inside of this div. Because if I target the all, each unordered list, my navigation bar is also an unordered list. Just I've messed with it a bit to make a CSS navigation bar, but this is an unordered list that we're going to target within that div. In here, first thing as we did before, pound content underscore right underscore holder. And then we just need to specify the tag before we're doing A for the anchor tag. So in this case, it's just UL for the unordered list tag. Again, define in this document only. Hit OK. Now, <clears throat> we're defining properties for this unordered list. Basically, what I want to do to this unordered list is get rid of those bullets, or maybe just change the bullets. So we're going to select the list, and we're going to choose type, and uh, well, we can hit square and just hit apply. You can see it changes to square. We can choose decimal, apply, and you can see how we have numbers. Or we can just choose none and apply, and we get none. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we can go to box and apply a margin, maybe five pixels to every side, hit apply, and you can see it's going to push away from that side. Of course, maybe we really want this to oops, choose same for all. And we just want to tweak the stuff to the left. So let's say negative 15. Let's see what that does for us. Oops, I just moved off screen. Hit apply. 
and that's pulling us back to about where we were. We need a little bit more than that. Let's say negative 25. And uh, here we go, hit apply. And there we go, that looks pretty good. So we're gonna hit okay. So we've started styling our unordered list, but we still have those links within it. So we can further target them. Now we can say new CSS rule, and we're gonna say pound content underscore right underscore holder space ul space remember those list items are within li tags list item tags so ul li a and then we're going to say link and then we can say comma and i'm just going to copy this entire thing note i picked up the comma there i want to make sure i get rid of that on the end and then just delete a and make that visited okay and um well let's Let's change the font. Let's make it Times New Roman, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Color, well, we'll make it, I don't know, blue. We're running out of kind of options here. We've been playing with this for so long. And the size, big, decoration, none. Hit OK. And you can see that our list has updated. And now anything we add to this list, if it is a link, it's going to be affected with this. See, if it's just another list item, if we just say, oh, I don't know, contact, it's not going to do anything. But as soon as I select it and make it a link, shift pound, bam, look at that. We have used CSS to select within our HTML structure here, this UL tag, and these LI tags, and further within that inside of these anchor tags. So you can see that using these CSS styles can be very, very powerful and really the sky's the limit. So just keep playing with it. Take what you've learned here and you know try to mess around with other things you have in Dreamweaver, other links, maybe images, all kinds of things. And uh, have fun with it. I hope you learned something from this video. Please go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com. Thank you for watching.